call, I got a call to do this interview about the Stryker brothers, and uh, I thought about not doing it, frankly, uh, just because those guys have, have uh, pretty much wrecked my career. I, I, I got a call uh, months and months ago to, to produce their record, but I'd heard some weird things about them, and so this, uh, you know, getting back together and starting the career over <clears throat> didn't, didn't really appeal to me as, as you know, I just, uh, I, I just wasn't sure if I wanted to work with them. They kept throwing the dollar signs at me, and finally we, we came to an agreement that I would, I would produce their record for them. Uh, on, on the first couple of meetings and, and the first couple of demo sessions, wow, they, they were nailing it. I mean, uh, I was pretty impressed uh, by their, their work ethic, and it seemed like they had kind of put in their, sort of put their demons behind them at that point. And really for the first, for about the first week of recording, they were, they were spot ready. I mean, every day they'd come in, their harmonies were, were extremely tight. I mean, they were like, you know, Leuven brother tight. They were, they were uh, Everly brothers, uh, you know, Donnie and Marie, uh, Sonny and Cher. It's like they were, they were that good. And then, you know, once we got the tracks cut and uh, some of their vocals done, it's like it kind of started going downhill at that point and uh, became kind of a nightmare situation. But, you know, I, I thought they had, they had kind, of, kind of beaten all their demons and were, were serious about what they were doing. But, and then after the first week, uh, yeah, and, and, you know, they started drinking. It's, it's like they, they would come in, you know, everything would be fine for about the first three hours. Then by one o'clock, they were both smashed. And then trying to get anything done productive after that was just, uh, it was just a wrestling match. They started wanting to bring their buddies in to play, uh, and their, their fr the friends they brought in were as drunk as they were. So during this time of my life, uh, dealing with that, my tolerance for bullshit was really low. You know, they'd, they'd be in the studio and I would uh, uh, hand them some, some notes that I thought you know, might be good for the, for the mixes. And they would just uh, take their lighters and just, just burn the notes right there in the studio. It was like strange. And like I said, my, my level for bullshit is at an all-time low. And I, so we, we had some confrontations. It started getting really tense, a lot of tension. I was able to, to finish the project. I was able to like uh, lay down their parts and then either replay them myself or bring someone else in to, to replay their parts. Nobody knew the difference, they, you know. Uh, they were so smashed. Finally, it got so bad between these two guys that they, they were arguing so much that, that I had to bring them in in shifts. I would bring Flint in to do his parts and then I'd bring Cole in to do his parts separately on, on, on different days or different half days. That was the only way we could get it finished. So it's ready to go and I'm, I, once I put them out the door, I want nothing more to do with them. It's like they're, they're uh, dysfunctional. Uh, they've pretty much tarnished my, my career just by association with them. And uh, so I wish them the best, but that's it. Uh, I hear that they're gonna tour behind this record when it gets out and uh, well, that'll be a blast. That'll be a, uh, can't wait to see what goes on there. And uh, I'm glad I won't be on that bus. And we all know how that ended last time. Perfect. Okay. <laughs>